And Steve, hello from Colorado. It's Jack. How the heck are you? It's good to uh, good to talk to you, sir. I uh, am going to. Uh, start by just asking about the uh, preparation for the trip. Uh, obviously, you've been uh, very, very heavily involved in a lot of different things uh, for the last uh, several months to get ready for this. But uh, now we're under a month, so what happens between now and launch day? Let me ask you this. Uh, we uh, obviously are watching developments in uh, Ukraine very closely. There's been a lot of talk about uh, real concerns regarding uh, if, if the Russians are going to continue supporting NASA uh, and vice versa if this crisis is not resolved. Do you have any worries about that, or are you just focused on what you need to do? I am focused on what I need to do at this time. Uh, that is, of course, way above my pay grade for that kind of decisions. But uh, NASA and the Russian Space Agency have been working together for many years, and they work well together, and I believe they'll continue to do so. What is the primary uh, focus of, of, the, of the mission uh, that you'll be involved in up there for the next six months? Well, the primary focus is science. We are up there to perform a lot of science, uh, many different experiments on board, over 170, and also, of course, to maintain the station and keep it ready and available for the next group. Something I know a lot of people in Colorado want to know, particularly in Steamboat Springs, how often do you pass over the Rockies, and can you see us? Sure. Uh, sorry, I sure can't see you. We pass over uh, the uh, our, your area, I should say, almost every 90 minutes. And uh, so uh, if it's not cloudy, I love to look down and see the Rocky Mountains. It's a beautiful area from space. When, uh, when you're up there, uh, you know, I, I know that there's some sacrifices involved. And uh, on this particular mission, you're going to miss out on a pretty important thing. Um, you know, I, I realize that's part of the job, but uh, how do you deal with that? I guess it's a little bit like being on board a submarine or a carrier or anybody that's in the military on deployment. That's a true statement. It is just like a deployment. I, I agree with you on that. And, yes, it is difficult, but I've talked to my son about it, Yeah, and we've talked about me missing his graduation and him going off to college. But we're going to be in contact. I'm going to even like video link into the ceremony itself. So we'll have some contact, and I won't miss the whole thing exactly. But, yes, I would like to be there, but this is also a very important thing for me to do. Well, that is, that is terrific. We're certainly proud of you. I hope you know that. Um, I want to ask if you can give us a sense of what it's like to ride uh, on, that, uh, on that rocket in that, in that Soyuz, uh, both going up and coming back. Well, I haven't ridden on the Soyuz yet, but I've heard many stories about it, so that's a really good question. Uh, first of all, the Soyuz itself is quite a small vehicle, especially compared to the shuttle. It fits three people in there, and they fit in there tightly. Uh, so you don't have much room. Uh, but it's about the same profile on launch. You get about three to four G's on the on the launch profile uh, during three staging events. Uh, so it's not too dissimilar or dissimilar to from the shuttle. Uh, the landing though is much different than the shuttle. Uh, you're coming down in a capsule on a parachute. Uh, you get more G's. You get spun up, and when you hit the ground, you hit hard, and you know about it. It's not a soft landing. And uh, how's your Russian? <laughs> Not very good. I wish it was better. It's good enough to get by, but boy, I wish it was better. All right. Just in our closing moments, uh, can you give me uh, some uh, advice for for all the young people in Colorado who may be watching this, who want to be Steve someday? Where, where, you know, is this still a viable thing for for people to think that one day, yes, I'm going to be up there just like Steve? I think it will be. I think especially as time goes on, maybe even we'll get more some commercial companies get involved in this process. And I think it's definitely a viable option for kids growing up today. But I, advice to them would be, of course, study, do well in school, find something that you really enjoy and do it well. Uh, and that will really help you along in life. And if you want to become an astronaut, it gives you a good stepping stone to start off from. Yeah, especially mathematics, because uh, obviously that was your background and uh, and software engineering. Well, Steve, again, thank you for your time this morning. Uh, we'll be uh, watching that launch with great anticipation, and uh, Godspeed, my friend. 
Thank you very much, Jack. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Steve, hi, Scott Evans from Boise, Idaho. How are you? I'm doing great, Scott. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Hey, I know you're going to answer this question a lot today, but if you could just quickly tell us what you'll be doing up there on ISS. You betcha. Our main job is science. I'll be pouring a bunch of scientific experiments. We have over 170 on board, so that's our main job. And the secondary job, of course, is to keep the space station up and running. All right, so uh, Boise State students are going to get the opportunity to speak with you on May 6th. Uh, why did you decide to talk to Boise State and their space Broncos? Well, I have a lot of family in Boise, and I really like the area. And also a good friend of mine, Bob, Bob Morgan, is now at Boise State. So through those, both of those contacts, I came up with the idea of the, reaching out to Boise State, and I hope they enjoy it. Why is it important that, you, that you're going to do this for them? Oh, I believe in uh, trying to inspire the students, especially the ones in our math and science and technology and engineering areas, to 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 really reach out or not, or to really try to do something different and try to do the best they can, and and uh, just to help them out and give them some idea that that their degrees can be really fun. It's a really good time to do something like that. And no better way than to speak with somebody who is actually in space on those very topics. Do you encourage people to pursue that as an education? Oh, yes. I, I would definitely like to have people do that. However, that's not their calling. You know, they should just do something they really enjoy doing. I think that's one of the benefits of life. That's one you should really try to do. But, of course, I, I you know, I'm this way, so I would like it that people uh, did the science and the math and engineering, et cetera. I believe that's actually quite uh, good for our country if they did that. Why do you think it's important for, uh, or I guess, what do you hope students gain from this opportunity to interact with you while in space? Oh, that's a good question. I guess I want them just to get the idea that uh, this math and science, uh, even though it is difficult right now for them in these classes, it turns out to be a really fun job, and it has a rewarding experience at the end. Your parents uh, live in this area, Eagle. Then I assume they've got to be proud. Well, I hope so. <laughs> All right. So uh, is there any way that you want the Space Broncos to prepare 
for their interview with you or their meeting with you come May? Oh, maybe they had some good questions they want to ask me. I'm also going to work with uh, Bob Morgan on maybe having them uh, come up with some ideas for little experiments, uh, just kind of little things I can do on board to see, you know, what happens if we do this or that. And I could try to get a couple of videos of that and show them those videos of that, too. That would be nice. All right, Steve, thank you so much for your time. I truly appreciate it. Have fun. Stay safe. Thank you very much. Have a great day. You, too. Bye. I mean, it's off screen here, but we've got a smooth commute for the most part, but there's still some work taking place right over here. Uh, Hi, Steve, it's Las Vegas. You got us? The parkway. You'll remember That'd 24 hours ago, this whole intersection was completely closed. Uh, okay, stand by. Again, close. Work on the uh, northeast corner Copy. of the premium out in the malls. Not quite sure what work they're doing, but apparently they hit a gas line yesterday, and you can see they're still doing some work in the area. Uh, Alta down to a single lane each direction just to the west of that intersection. Elsewhere, it looks good here at the Rancho Interchange with US-95. No delays whatsoever, so we will move it over to Dana. Okay, thanks, Tom. In terms of the weather, today we'll have those breezes up to about 35 miles an hour with a high of 71 degrees. Sunny is 71, and we may have some more winds, especially tomorrow morning. 74 on Sunday, and then next week we'll get close to 80 on Monday. It is 5:11 now. NASA will launch Expedition 39 this month. The crew expected to take off on the 25th from Kazakhstan. And joining me live from Star City, Russia, to talk about this mission is Steve Swanson. Steve, thank you so much for joining us. I know you have been to the International Space Station before, but tell me about this mission. Why are you going this time? Oh, good morning, Dana. I'm going this time to more perform science and do a bunch of experiments. We have over 107 experiments uh, on board right now. And last time I did it, we were building the station, putting all the uh, infrastructure in place for the science. So now I'm lucky enough to live up there for six months and perform science and hopefully help everybody else down here on Earth. So you've been to the International Space Station before. Actually, you've taken four spacewalks before. What we, I've seen the movie Gravity. I hope that you have, too. Is it anything like that movie when you're out there on a spacewalk? Well, I haven't seen Gravity yet, but I've seen the, the previews for it, and I believe they did a really good job on their cinematography and the view that you would have on a spacewalk. It is a fantastic view, and I think they really showed that on that movie. What's it like to be in space for six months? I don't know if you've ever been in space that long before. But it, it, do you get lonely? Do you get bored? Do you miss uh, cheeseburgers? Well, that's a good question. I haven't done that yet, but I've talked to many people who have. And I do agree with you on that last one. I am going to miss cheeseburgers. Matter of fact, last night we went back into Moscow and I found the place with the best cheeseburgers in town and had one just to prepare for that. However, though, I do think we will be very busy and there are other astronauts and cosmonauts up there that are good friends and we'll have a good time together. So I will not be lonely, but I will miss the cheeseburgers. And, and finally, how's your Russian? I, there must be, you have to be able to communicate to your fellow astronauts, and I assume that at some point you're going to have to speak Russian to them, or do they all speak English? 
Well, it's a combination. I mean, my Russian isn't great. I can pass on my Russian, and they can pass on their English, and so we can communicate. And that really matters, of course, on the vehicle going up, we speak Russian on the Soyuz vehicle, but when I'm on the station, I will speak mostly with the Mission Control in Houston, and that's all in English. So we both have to do both languages. You know, I'm not perfect at it, but we can, we can communicate. Steve Swanson, live from Russia this morning. We really appreciate you joining us today, and uh, we wish you Godspeed on your journey to the International Space Station. Kim? All right, and thank you to Steve as well. I cannot wait to hear from him when he gets back. Right. And to hear that. Steve, good morning. It's Peter King at CBS News. Uh, I know you've got to be excited about your launch. What are you most looking forward to? That's true. I am excited about the launch. I'm just looking forward to living on station for six months. I think it's going to be a great experience. To me, it's kind of like going to a country uh, for six months versus going to a country for two weeks. I've done the two weeks one. Uh, you, get, you get to visit it, but you really don't get to know it. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this idea of spending six months up there. Well, you've flown the shuttle, and soon you're going to fly the Soyuz. How comfortable are you uh, with that spacecraft? Do you have any concerns about safety or anything? No, I don't. Uh, it might be an older vehicle, and it's definitely different than a shuttle, but it is a robust vehicle, and it can, I think, handle most kind of failures that would be presented to it. It's a good vehicle. Your family's coming to the launch? Uh, my wife and my youngest son are, are coming, yes. And my parents uh, and my excited and are they right now? And, uh, you know, is there a little bit of nervousness there? Oh, I'm sure there's always a little bit of nervousness right on the day of launch. Uh, but uh, overall, I think uh, that, you know, she's been to two uh, shuttle launches before, and she's kind of used to it at this point. And so, uh, you know, yes, my little bit, but eh, it's good once it's over. Do you have to talk with, the, with uh, your children before you go about, uh, you know, what happens if uh, something goes awry? Uh, yes, I do have a talk with them. However, you know, they're all old enough now to understand exactly what's going on, and uh, we've had good discussions just on other things in that area. So I don't really have to have a long conversation with them. But you're right, that is a good point to have to do, and, and I try to get that done. Steve, you have a six-month mission up there. There's a lot of time to do a lot of things. Uh, what, are the, what are the things that you're particularly looking forward to? And, you know, in particular, uh, what about uh, any particular science? I think you used that word three times, I'm sorry. Any science experiments that you are uh, especially excited about? There are definitely some good science experiments. Um, there's some that I won't even touch that I'm very interested in. There's one called the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, which is on the outside of the station, and it's looking for dark matter, dark energy, and antimatter. It's just trying to get the fundamentals of our physics down. What, how does this, 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 our, our universe really work? And I'm really kind of interested in that, uh, but I don't really interact with that. One of the ones I do interact with is where I'm a test subject on the idea of the degradation of the eye. Right now, about 50% of the astronauts have some sort of eyes issue. They lose their vision a little bit, or I mean, their vision degrades a little bit. And so we're trying to figure out really why that's going on. And so we're going to do a bunch of different tests on this area. And uh, I'm going to be part of that, just going to be the guinea pig. And also then I'll be doing the, the test conductor on another astronaut at the same time. So I'm really looking forward, though, to seeing how, why that's going on. Maybe we can learn something about that. Steve, I know uh, astronauts are not necessarily uh, political animals by nature, but, uh, you know, there is a situation with Russia, the Ukraine, and uh, I'm wondering if uh, any of what's going on there and uh, between the Russia and the U.S. right now is affecting anything uh, that you do with station. All right, now it's not affecting anything I do. And the way I look at it, the NASA and the Russian Space Agency have been working together for many years now. And I believe they will continue to do that. We have a really good relationship with them. And we've been through other different difficult times we, between the Russian and American governments before. And I believe we will just continue to work together in, in a great uh, idea of cooperate, cooperation. You know, there was a, a similar situation in one of the Arthur C. Clarke novels. And uh, I, I'm just wondering if there is any concern at all that any of this may come down the chain and affect uh, you guys once you're up in space. I don't believe so. You know, you can't never be 100% sure, but I don't believe that's going to happen. All right. Well, you know, you've done those short-duration shuttle missions. Uh, what are you particularly looking forward to in, in the routine of uh, having six months up there? What are the things you'd like to do that you didn't necessarily get to do during the shuttle? 
That's a good question, because in the shuttle days, we were very, very busy. We only got a couple hours off the whole shuttle mission. And this time, I'm going to get, you know, uh, weekends off pretty much, or close to, like, the weekends off. So I'm going to be have some free time to really look down at the planet, uh, study the planet, and get to understand, you know, just be able to look over and say, oh, look at that, that's Africa, and that's the, you know, this lake or this uh, mountain range and all that, just by visually looking at it and not having, you know, to even see a map to, to understand where I am. I'm really looking forward to being that, or that kind of intimacy, I think, with the Earth. I think that's going to be a great experience. And just uh, in the 20 seconds we have left, a yes, no, are we going to see you on social media up there? I'll be doing Instagram. We're having an ISS account right now, and I'm starting to uh, send out uh, the pictures on Instagram at this time. Outstanding. Thank you, Steve. We look forward to watching your launch. Thank you very much.
a space correspondent, so I guess we'll let uh, Randy Siegel uh, take it away. Randy, good morning. Good morning, sir. We're getting ready to talk with Steve Swanson, who is uh, going to be the commander on the International Space Station in three months. So we're just waiting for the live feed to take place, and uh, we'll be talking to him as he's over in Star City, Russia. Yeah, and of course, uh, Steve Swanson has been uh, in space several times before. Okay, yeah, we're, we're good. We're good to go. We can start the interview. Good morning, Steve. Randy Siegel here from WSGU Radio in Stewart, Florida. How are you doing over there in Star City? Good morning. Good morning, Randy. I'm doing fine. How are you? Doing really well, thank you. Steve, I noticed in your biography here that you grew up in Colorado, and uh, now you went to Florida Atlantic University here in Boca. And was it because of the cold weather that brought you down here? Well, it was a change of pace, exactly. And my undergraduate was University of Colorado, and I decided I wanted to change of pace. I wanted to see what Florida was like, what the beach was like. I loved it down there. Uh -huh. Well, it's obvious that you enjoyed it, and you continued your education, as we know, becoming an astronaut in 98. And uh, you spent a couple of weeks in space twice aboard the shuttle, and you did spacewalks. How would you describe your experience during those spacewalks? That was a fantastic experience. I mean, it's different emotions as you're doing that. One, you're under a little bit of pressure. You're trying to do a job. It's a difficult job out there. We were putting on new pieces of the space station, deploying the solar arrays. At the same time, you're looking at this beautiful Earth down below you. You're floating around in your own little spacecraft. It's a wonderful experience. Yeah, well, you still have some more EVAs to do coming up on your mission. I believe you've got two of them scheduled right now. Any trepidation at all with the spacesuits? Uh, no, you're right. We do have two, but uh, I believe we found the root cause of the, or the reason why we had those issues with the space with the spacesuits. Uh, we're going to uh, replace the parts that were failed uh, on those other suits. We're going to put, put new parts in all the suits. So I believe they're good to go. Now, the fact that you uh, aren't sure exactly who's going to be your partner on the spacewalks yet, does that create any kind of problems for you? No, we've trained together with uh, everybody on the crew has trained together on any spacewalk. So uh, whatever they decide, we'll be happy with. Uh, of course, everybody wants to go out and do it, but uh, we'll all be uh, capable of doing whatever task they give us. As you, as you head up into space, all of the astronauts, or cosmonauts, if you will, on the Soyuz, have had a little mascot that they have attached that shows you when you hit weightlessness. Uh, who picks that, That's and uh, what is your mascot going to be? Well, our uh, Soyuz commander picks that, and he, I haven't actually seen it yet. He's described it to me, uh, but it's just more a little stuffed animal that, that he's picked, and I haven't really seen it yet, so I can't give you a good, really good description of what it's going to be like. But it's just uh, basically a little furry uh, stuffed animal. Going up into space, Steve, you have the weightlessness adaptation. I know I have flown on the, uh, the weightless aircraft, and I got a great handle on how astronauts okay. uh, really have to work. Okay. Anybody experience any Randy, problems as a result? Randy, I'm sorry, the NASA is telling us we're out of time. Yeah. Well, Randy, just let you know real quickly that uh, um, some people do have some issues, but uh, I really don't have much on it. I was lucky not to have many issues at all, and we do, uh, you know, have different uh, medicines that we need to at all. And so we can get around that issue. But within a day or two, pretty much everybody's feeling fine. And especially in a six-month mission, you'll be good for a long time. And, and it's not a big deal. Hey, Steve, it's Dan at ABC News. How are you? Um, uh, Doing fine, thank you. And, um, and good, good. Thank you. Appreciate your time today. We'll uh, get going in just uh, a couple of seconds. The backstabbing, two-timing, double-crossing drama Dallas just kicked off. This is a special report from ABC News. I'm Dan Kleffler, New York, with this ABC News Digital Special Report. Well, if we can't be friends on Earth, at least we can get along in space. American astronaut Steve Swanson will soon be flying up to the International Space Station along with two Russian cosmonauts where he will be commander of Expedition 40. Of course, 
This all coming as political tensions are running high between Russia and the United States over Ukraine and Russia's involvement in Crimea. So the question is, how do we deal with the separation of space and state? And when the U.S. is so reliant on Russia, uh, the only way astronauts can get to and from the International Space Station. So to give us some answers to those questions, I want to bring in astronaut Steve Swanson from Star City, Russia, where he is preparing for his March 25th launch into space. Steve, thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Now, I have to ask you, you know, here in the United States, we've been focusing a lot on the tension between Washington and Moscow. How does that impact your preparations for this flight? Well, it hasn't affected my preparations at all for the flight. Uh, my crew and I and even everybody here at the training center uh, are focused on the mission at this time, and we're not really paying that much attention. Of course, we read about it in the paper, but for us, it's not uh, our, our main uh, point of, of interest in that sense of our more, uh, main priority. Uh, just for us, it's the mission itself, and that's what we're trying to uh, work on at this time. Now, you're also going to be flying up with two cosmonauts as well. Do you meet with them regularly? Has, has this been brought up or discussed at all? I do meet with them regularly. We train together on a regular basis. And uh, no, we have not discussed this at, at all. Um, it's just not that. I know it's a very important topic, of course. Uh, but for us right now, the most important thing is flying in space. And we have a job to do, and we need to get that job done. Is there, because of the shuttle program being ended, but obviously the exploration program continuing on there, is there something of a, of a pride? Is, is, it, is it a matter that you, that you go to Russia, that you start working with cosmonauts in the sense that, you know, that there has to be that kind of cooperation going into it? Oh, we definitely have cooperation on both sides. I mean, both space agencies need each other. I mean, you know, we definitely need the ride to space at this time, but we do other stuff on the space station. We give them energy. We give other things to them, too. So it's definitely a, a codependent relationship uh, between the two space agencies. So I think we, we, uh, we work well together. Uh, yes, of course, as an astronaut, I'd love to have an American vehicle, but I know right now that's not possible. So we do the best we can, and we work with the Russians. We find them to be great partners. You're going out there as a flight engineer. You'll also transition to a commander in May. Then how exactly does that work? Uh, what happens is the current crew up there right now, there's three people who are actually six people right now, and in a couple of days, three of them are going to leave. Uh, the command will switch over to the, one of the three people on board. And then when I get up there in a few weeks, um, they, they will continue being the same commander. But when he leaves in about two and a half months, then I will assume a command at that time. Preparing for the launch, astronaut Steve Swanson in Star City, Russia. We thank you for that. And, of course, safe travels up to the International Space Station. And, of course, you can get a complete thank you very recap much. on NASA missions and U.S.-Russia relations right here on abcnews.com. Thank you so much. in Ontario, Canada. Mostly a pickup, pull out in front of him, there it is, and wham, bam, he T-bones the truck. Now, the good news here, no serious injuries to report, but the man driving the pickup was cited failure to yield. There it is again. Police say the video also shows him talking on the phone, and that could stand by for distracted driving. In just under three weeks from now, Colorado astronaut Steve Swanson will blast into orbit on his way to the International Space Station. Well, this morning he joins us live. He's at a training base in Star City, Russia. Good morning, Steve. I'm going to skip the tensions between the U.S. and Russia because this is happening still. Tell us what's going on there. How are you doing this morning? Uh, right here now in Star City, I'm finished my final exams. And so I'm kind of on a little rest break now for a few days. And then in about uh, three or four days, I'm heading to Baikonur to do our last little bit of training down there and get ready for launch. You really have the coolest job maybe out there. We know this is your first time to outer space, but describe to us, Earthlings, what it's like up there. Oh, it's beautiful. There's many different parts to it. The one I think I like the most almost is just floating in space. It's, a, it's just a great feeling. And it's so much fun for me. I feel like a kid who's found the best playground in the world. I know you're a Colorado Springs guy, so tell us uh, how you got where you are today. 
I like to correct you correct on that, I'm a steamboat springs guy. Even though we're springs, it's a little bit different. Uh, I went to University of Colorado, though, after graduating from high school at Steamboat Springs. Uh, worked around a little bit, uh, went to graduate schools, got a PhD, ended up working at NASA for a while, and I got lucky enough to be selected as an astronaut. Can you tell us a little bit more about your mission, what you're going to accomplish, and who else is joining you on the mission? Sure. Uh, on my Soyuz, on the way up to this, this space station, will be two cosmonauts. Uh, on the space station, we'll do mostly science. We have over 170 experiments going on uh, during our mission. Uh, I'll be when I, we get there, we'll be joined by, or already up there, will be uh, three uh, astronauts or kind of cosmonauts. Uh, uh, one even from Japan. Uh, they will leave in a few months, and then uh, another uh, three people will come up. Uh, an American, a German, and a Russian at that time. And again, our main job is to, is to perform science and keep the station running. At least we still get along in space. Steve Swanson of Steamboat Springs. Steve, thank you very much. Safe travels to you. What a no problem. Thank you. Very cool interview. Let's turn now to weather and traffic. We have to worry about what's going on down here. Good morning, Steve. This is Atlanta. Can you hear us? You trust. I have you loud and clear. Instantly, with an alignment purchase. Going on now. Excellent. The anchor's name is Buck. And we're going to be hitting Got in it, about uh, 40 seconds or so. We've been following here a fatal crash, 85 northbound at Sylvan Road. This is a live look at the scene right now through a DOT camera. Officers say someone was hit and killed when they jumped from a moving vehicle. Now, this is right at the airport. They're rerouting traffic off at Sylvan Road and then getting folks back on to I-85. They've got, again, all lanes shut down as they work to investigate. They estimate it could be several hours, about three hours before this reopens. So you're going to want to find a complete alternate to get to the city and the downtown connector from 85 this morning. Morning. It's, it's a bad one there. Now, 85 here on the northern perimeter, 85, 27 minutes. Georgia 400 is still the slowest, right? It's still kind of increasing this morning. 42 minutes from Alpharetta to 285, and then 75 from Wade Green to the perimeter. That's clocking in just under half an hour. That's all from the Skyfox traffic. Stand by. Here we come. See you. Katie, thank you. 839, your time. And all right, this is pretty cool. Later this month, NASA astronaut Steve Swanson, who's from Colorado, will serve as flight engineer of the International Space Station Expedition 39. And then in mid-May, he will transition to commander of Expedition 40. And this morning, thanks to the production assistance of NASA, he joins us live from Earth for now, more specifically at the Garrigan Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, Russia, to talk about the mission. I guess I should say good evening to you in Russia today, right? That is correct. It is an evening over here. But good morning to you. All right. Very early in the morning here. But let's talk a little bit about this mission. Tell us what you hope to accomplish and, and what it's going to be like to transition from an engineer to the commander from 39 to 40. Good question. Uh, mostly science is what we're going to be doing. We have over 170 experiments on board. Besides that, of course, we have to take care of the station and keep it running. Uh, the transition phase will not be too difficult. Uh, a good friend of mine, Koichi Wakata, will be the commander when I arrive. Uh, he'll be commander about two months while I'm there. Then he's going to have to come back to Earth. And so at that time, he'll hand over to me, and I'll start taking over. And uh, my main job, of course, is just working the big-picture relationships with the ground. Tell me how you prepare. I mean, you've done this before. It's not your first rodeo, as we like to say here in America, of course. You've been to space. You've done spacewalks. You've been in the International Space Station. How do you prepare for this? And just tell us a little bit about what it's like, the view and the experience. Well, the training flow for this specific six-month 
uh, space station uh, uh, trip it took me two and a half years. So it's a lot of different training, just on systems and then all the science we're going to do and preparing for all sorts of contingencies. It's a long training flow. Um, but it's well worth it, I believe. Uh, I, I'm very, very happy to be in this, you know, the honor and the privilege to go. So I'm just really looking forward to this whole thing. And what's it like when you're up there, when you look back down and you see Earth, and when you get to do the, the spacewalks and things like that? What is that experience like for those of us that will never get to feel that? Well, it is fantastic, I'll admit that. Uh, the view, uh, looking back down on Earth, it's just, it's just amazing. I know you, you can see video of it, but to see it with your own eye, it just adds another whole level to that. It, it's fantastic. It just gives you such a great feeling. I also like the floating in space a lot, I have to admit. That is just so much fun for me. I, I enjoy it. It's like, you know, having found the best playground in the world. And, uh, and the work's not bad either, really, so I really enjoy being up there. It is the International Space Station. The United States and Russia work uh, closely together on the missions at the International Space Station. And I want to ask you, with diplomatic relations strained a little bit between the countries right now, uh, does that affect you guys at all? Can you put politics aside? Is that something that even comes up, or how do you guys handle that? No, it really doesn't come up. We, you know, we have a job to do, and we work hard at that. And uh, we, uh, it's our main priority right now. And really, we can't be uh, thinking about too many other things at this time. So it doesn't really come up, and it doesn't affect us all at this time. All right. Well, Steve Swanson, we appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you for the work you do, and Godspeed. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. All right. 8.43 is your time and coming up on Good Day Atlanta. We've We're clear. Thanks a lot. spectacular sale for up to 80% off department store prices throughout the store. And don't miss our giant betting sale with our lowest prices of the year. I'm uh, fine, thanks, Jennifer. You?
Sorry about that. The mic's not working so well. We just finished the main run of our training, and uh, I'm actually getting a couple days off here before I head down to Baikonur to finish up the last little bit of training and get ready to launch. I'm doing Instagram. I don't know if I can keep up with Chris. He was an animal at that. So I'll do my best and I'll try to send pictures and I'll try to do this, some stuff. But I, boy, competing with him is just too difficult. So actually we're doing one for the space station itself and I know I'll, I'll, we'll get that to you shortly here but uh, I'll be just uh, they're trying to get an Instagram handle for the space station so I'll just be with the first guy to start this idea that will be who's ever on station sends out the information and the pictures. Our main task is science. We have over 170 experiments going on, and we're performing those every day. Of course, also we have to keep the space station running and you know all working. Things will will break, so we'll have to fix them, and we'll get to do a couple spacewalks too. So I'm looking forward to that. It is a fantastic experience. Of course, I haven't had the uh, main issues like in the movie Gravity, uh, but it's also a little pressure on you. You have a main job to do, and it's a little bit difficult out there in the suit doing that job, but overall, it's a great experience. The view is fantastic, uh, and just being in your own little spacecraft itself, floating around and looking down on Earth, it's, it's just a, a fantastic feeling. Oh, yes. Uh, fortunately, I couldn't ski this year, and you guys are having such a great year. Uh, I was just I was so disappointed, but I'm looking forward to next year. I plan on getting a lot of ski days in next year. One problem spot, eastbound I-70 near Brighton Boulevard, got a crash there. Now, high country, that's getting hit with the snow already. They just posted chain restrictions over Loveland Pass, so snowing over Loveland Pass, snowing along I-70, especially that Vail Pass stretch where it's really getting slick now. Health One brings you this report. Next update, 658. The new and improved birthing center at the medical... And Steve, you are with us, correct, sir? beginning register for a free I'm here with you yes. at Aurora Med fantastic here you go with April B tour ground control to major Tom. 650 on 850 KOA, April Zesbach, Colorado's morning news on this beautiful Friday morning. Not often that we get to talk to an astronaut on the other side of the world, but we do right now. Colorado Springs native NASA astronaut Steve Swanson joins me from the Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, Russia. Good evening to you, Steve. You are three weeks away from launch. Tell us about that mission. Uh, good morning to you. And our mission to the space station, of course, you said it's three weeks away. We're going to go up, uh, and I'm looking forward to that launch, but we are going to go up and do mostly science on board. Uh, we have over 170 experiments we're going to partake in. And, of course, we also have to maintain the station. Things do break, so we'll have to keep that running. 
We understand this interview is being broadcast live on NASA's TV public channel. So cool. Um, Steve, how does the training go right now, and what are you working on three weeks out? Well, I just finished the final exams here in Star City, which uh, means we're now actually kind of all ready to go. We just have to uh, head down to Baikonur, which we'll do in a few days. Uh, we do a little bit of this review training down there, check out the vehicle, make sure everything's good to go. And then they say in a few weeks we climb in the vehicle and launch. So oh, not much more left to go. Wow, it's exciting. How many missions and spacewalks have you been on? I've been on two shuttle missions and four spacewalks. What is that like? Can you describe for folks as they're on their way to their, their Friday morning at work, what is your job like when you go on a spacewalk? Well, it's a little different than the morning commute, that's for sure. Um, it is, I can say it's definitely a long day. Think of that. The day lasts about 14 hours on the day you do a spacewalk. The spacewalk itself lasts about six and a half to seven hours. Um, and while you're out there, of course, you don't have any food. You just have a little bit of water to drink. But that's not so bad because the, the experience is fantastic. Um, the views, everything you do is just wonderful. However, there also is some pressure at the same time. You have to work in this difficult suit. You have to get things done. You have to we, we attached new uh, modules to the space station, deployed the solar arrays, which were difficult tasks, but it was still overall was a fantastic experience. I loved it. As we've been saying, you'll be at the International Space Station with two Russian cosmonauts. Of course, our big stories down here have a lot to do with the standoff between Russia and the Ukraine, but I imagine you've got this big job to do. You're probably not talking politics with your colleagues, are you? That is a true statement. We're not talking much politics. I don't think, you know, just like anywhere, when you get down to the working level uh, and we're working between, you know, with each other, we work about, we think about our job, we want to make sure we do our job well, and that's really what's important. And the, the guys I work with are great guys. I really enjoy them. I don't know if you've seen the movie Gravity, and if you have seen it, if you would call it total fiction, but wow, I have so much respect for people who can live in space and the, the difficult conditions up there. What's the hardest part of living and working in space? Well, that's a good question. The hardest part. Um, overall, I think well, one thing is, of course, you're away from your family for six months, which is kind of a difficult thing to do. I think the people on deployment in the military know all about that. Uh, that's not so bad. But overall, uh, difficulty is just, uh, I think, that you, you never kind of leave your job. You're always on call, kind of working. And yeah, you get a few hours off here and there. You get some, maybe a day off on the weekend or something like that. But you're kind of like always working. You never get that time to really just sit back and relax. I mentioned you're from Colorado Springs. I know you've got to run, but do you want to give a shout out to any family and friends here? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's actually Steamboat Springs, and yes, I do. I have my in laws up in Steamboat Springs. Uh, Chris and Chan Young, I'd like to say hello to them. Awesome. Thanks so much. We had uh, bad information that you're from Colorado Springs, but thanks so much for the time, Steve. I appreciate it. Steve Swanson live. From almost, sir, thank you very much. Stay safe. Russia, unbelievable. He and his crewmates will launch March 25th on the Cosmodrome. Okay, thank you. Hi, Steve. This is Allison in New York. How are you? I'm fine. How are you, Allison? I'm well, thank you. So, listen, this is a taped interview. It's not live, and then we're going to use this interview and send it out to the Fox uh, affiliates around the country, okay? Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Great. So um, why don't you just talk a little bit, kind of set the stage for us. I know you're um, over in Russia right now. Just talk a little bit about um, what you're doing there in advance of a special launch on the 25th. Sure. I arrived here about uh, four weeks ago, started prepping for our final exams here in Russia, doing a last-minute training. We just finished those final exams, so now I get a few days off. And then uh, on Wednesday, we head down to Baikonur, which is where we launched from in Kazakhstan. Uh, we have two more weeks there, and then when we're down there, we do a little more of a review of our training, and we'll also check out the vehicle, and then uh, we launch on the 25th and head off to the space station. And what are some of the things that you're going to be doing for this particular mission? 
For this particular mission, our main focus is on science. We have over 170 experiments on board that we'll be partaking in. So I'm definitely looking forward to, do, of course, doing that. And we have to keep the space station running, of course. So we will be you know, maintaining uh, things that break, uh, cleaning things on a regular basis, just doing the average housekeeping stuff that you do anywhere. And how is this different from other missions? Is it going to be shorter or longer? I know you've been up um, in space several times, so just talk a little bit about what specifically makes this, this mission unique. Well, my first two missions were on the shuttle. They were two-week missions, and the, the purpose of them, of those missions was to, uh, uh, to put on new modules of the space station, and specifically electrical systems and the solar arrays. And so it was all about the construction of the space station, uh, making it uh, better, uh, have more power, so we could actually do all the science. And now we're through with most of the construction of the space station, so now it's time to actually do the science. So for me, it's a big difference. I'm switching over to being more of a, a scientist and worrying about that and not the construction anymore. And so it's a big change. And also living up there for six months is a big change. It's going to be a big difference of really having to adapt and really getting used to living in space for a long period of time. Yeah, I bet this is kind of a relief now. The construction part is over, and now you're doing what you love to do, which is to collect the scientific information. What are some of the things that you anticipate finding um, or studying while you're up there during the six months? Well, I say many different experiments. A couple of them one I find interesting is uh, one that has to do with our eyesight. It seems for some reason, we really don't even know why yet, but about 50% of the astronauts uh, have some degradation in their vision. And we're trying to figure out why this is. So now we have a bunch of experiments we're going to do on the eyes. We do from ultrasounds to OCTs to fundoscopes to all of these different kind of uh, experiments we're going to do on the eye to try to figure out why we're having eye degradation. Well, that's kind of interesting to me. I mean, one, it's, of course, it, it's close to home for me because I want to know if something goes wrong with me, why it's happening. But and for future on, for other people who are going to follow me, we need to figure out why this is happening. And you are going up with uh, Russian cosmonauts. How's the relationship with you guys over there, um, you know, um, despite, you know, all the stuff that's going on internationally and politically around the world right now? That's a good question. Luckily, the two guys I go up with are great guys. And honestly, what's, what's happening around the, in that big picture of the world doesn't really affect us too much. You know, we have a job to do. We've been concentrating on that job, and it's our main priority. So that's what we do. We can't let many things distract, distract us like that. So, we, you know, it, for us, it's not that big of a deal. Even though I know it's a huge deal in the, in the world politics world, but for us, it's, it's not uh, that important for us. Are you worried that if the uh, relationship between the U.S. and Russia deteriorates more, that the uh, relationship you guys have um, in your space programs will suffer or have some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of problems because of this? It's a good question. I don't believe so. I mean, the uh, Russian Space Agency and NASA have worked together now for many years, even since the 70s. And there have many, been many ups and downs in that overall relationship between our governments. And the relationship between the space agencies has always maintained a good, uh, equal working relationship. So I don't see that really changing. You, know, you never know, of course, I got to admit, you never know. But I got to imagine that uh, it's all going to be fine on, on our level. Well, let's hope it stays that way, especially since the U.S. doesn't really have a space shuttle program anymore, so you're kind of hitching a ride with them if for nothing else. <laughs> that is a true statement. Yeah, well, of course, I wish we had one, but we don't. So, And, you know, the Russian space agency is also dependent upon us. We provide them a lot of things when it comes to the space station itself. So we are definitely a codependent relationship, and uh, I think it's beneficial for both uh, state space agencies and their governments to have us work together. All right. Thank you so much, Steve, for taking the time to talk with us today. Good luck up there. And when you get back in six months or a little bit after, uh, let's talk again. Sounds great. Thank you.